record on this computer. Cool. <clears throat> so we're going to start out. We're going to do release one together. And we're not going to worry about the multiplayer. We're just going to worry about the authentication por portion. Um, we're going to follow this tutorial. It's a medium tutorial. It's a couple of years old. It's really good. Um, talks about sessions and tokens and like cookies. Uh, so you can kind of dictate where you want to store that token ID or session ID on your browser uh, or your token ID in your browser. It can be either a session ID or, you know, you can even store it in the local storage. That's generally not best practice, but if you can make it work and your app will work, store it in local storage, go ahead and do so. I did it on mine just because I wanted to make it work and that local storage is easy to uh, work with. <clears throat> so, where is it? So I've got LS. So here's my whoop, I'm gonna like code. Open this. <clears throat> so I already created a React front end and a like a rock paper scissors back end and a rock paper scissors front end. Here's that the front end uh, React app. Here's the back end Django app right here. So with that, let's just walk through. It's pretty pretty straightforward. We've already kind of gone through this stuff before. We see other commands like pip env. I don't have to use that. You can use just uh, make, a, make a virtual environment. You don't necessarily need to do this either, but you can if you want. But right here, I've got my Django, uh, Django project created. <clears throat> Now I need to uh, Python make VNV, VNV. Oh, uh, actually I'm gonna delete that. So I actually just wanna make it uh, RM, RF, VNV. So I actually wanna go into my backend. Backend, there we go. I'm gonna clear. So now I'm in my rock, paper, scissors backend. Now I can actually do the Python make VNV, VNV. So I just made my virtual environment. I can source, actually go into my virtual environment. So here, now <clears throat> we're starting off pretty much right here. So now we're going to need to install some packages. We need to install Django, Django REST framework. I know someone posted about Django REST framework. Uh, it's a really good framework, uh, uh, but it, there's a lot of things that magically happen underneath the hood. So what we've been doing in like in our views and in our serializers, you can pretty much write that whole thing and probably no more than 10 lines of code between your views and your serializers. But there's a lot of stuff that goes on underneath the hood. Um, and we didn't, we wanted to kind of show you what is actually happening. Uh, that's why we kind of got rid of the Django REST framework. But with this, we're gonna use it. <clears throat> so we're gonna install Django, Django REST framework, Django REST framework, JavaScript web token. That's what that JWT stands for. And we're going to also install Django cores headers to uh, deal with the cores issues. So I can pretty much just copy uh, Python. Wait, what is it? Uh, pip pip install Django Django REST framework. Django REST JWT, JavaScript Web Token, Django Cores Headers, and Cobb G2, because we're going to be using a Postgres database. Anybody have any questions? Uh oh, what happened? Oh. Needed a space there. <clears throat> All right. So 
we already started my projects. So I already did that. So they created a virtual environment, installed everything, and then created a project where I already created the project. So we can skip that part. So it says, now we need to adjust some of our project settings. So this is where we have to install our course headers and our REST framework. This is what the issue was happening yesterday with uh, Julian, is that correct? We, we didn't have the course headers installed in our installed apps. Yeah, that was uh, one issue. I forget what the other issue was. was oh, the, uh, the protocol in with the wait list. Yep. So down, yeah. So down here, it's just the local host, but I like to put the HTTP and the HTTPS as well. Yeah, mine didn't work until I put the protocol yeah. with the so, main. So there's not, we're not going to follow this to a hundred percent T, but we'll get through it uh, right here. So, so in our settings, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to create DB first. I'm going to create a data Postgres database, RPS, rock, paper, scissors, um, <coughs> uh, Lima, there we go. So I created a database. So now I need to put the REST framework and course headers into my Django installed apps. Come down here. And then in the middleware, I need to do put the course headers, the course middleware above this common middleware. So here's that common middleware. So I can just put that there. And if you want, just to keep things consistent, move those to the top. And then we have to add this REST framework uh, variable as well. So just gives us some permissions. It's authenticated uh, default authentication classes. We're gonna be using the Django REST uh, the REST framework, the JWT, we're going to be using a JSON web, a JavaScript web token. So this is all just configuration for the REST framework. And then we also have to include the cores whitelist. And I'm going to do HTTP as well as HTTPS. So it breaks down what we what we just did, you can read that uh, when you're going through it. Now the Django REST framework JWC package provides us with a default view for decoding received JavaScript web tokens. You can add that to the URLs in the project. So we need to open our URLs, get rid of this stuff, import that have this include because we're going to be dealing with our app and then we're going to have a path called to token authentication and we've got this built-in uh, view method from the rest frame the jwt rest framework so we're we're almost already almost done we're going to start we can migrate this stuff but we're doing rock paper scissors and so <clears throat> I'm gonna fill out some, uh, I'm gonna first create Python manage.py. I'm gonna actually create a rock, paper, scissors app. Uh, manage.py start app uh, RPS API. There's my rock, paper, scissors app right here. So I need to actually create a game model for this specific uh, game. And if we look down here, so when you're dealing with the back end, we can come up with our models. So you can look at this, this is kind of going through. So Here's our models. This is what we kind of have to deal with. So I'm gonna just say, 
class game models model and it says your game model should include should belong to a user so it can say user uh, models dot foreign key I can see import the existing user model on delete cast scade related names equals game and I'm going to say null equals true right now. Has a win status equals, well, first I need to import this user from the built-in model or the built-in user model uh, models. Have a win status, win or lost. That can be a string or a Boolean value. So this is from the user's perspective. So I'm just gonna create this a Boolean value. There we go. And then <clears throat> user throw, because so we have a user, a user throw. A string with that is user played, either rock, paper, or scissors. This might be a good time to have a, like a validator in here to ensure that it's only rock, paper, or scissors. Uh, just some food for thought. Char field, uh, max length. I'm gonna say, what's the longest? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So scissors is the longest word. So max length is that. Then computer throw. So it should be the same right here. <clears throat> So I have a game that belongs to a user, has a win status from the point of view of the user. So it's a true or false. So if the win status is true, that means they've won. If it's false, that means they've lost. And I have a user throw that is either rock, paper, or scissors, which is a, a string. Does anybody have any questions about my initial user model or my game model for rock, paper, scissors? Uh, line four, you have a spelling error. Our model. Thank you. <clears throat> and this probably, sh I'm just having null be true. It doesn't need to be. All right. So back to the tutorial. Uh, let's go ahead and instead of just migrating, we want to migrate. We want to create mi migrations for this game model. So we go Python manage.py make migrations uh that's it oh what did i forget to do uh, well i was gonna say i had one question about the the importing the user um is that the when you're going to import that online uh five there as foreign key you're actually including that from what's kind of pre-built in with the admin users <clears throat> Uh, correct. Yes. It's the, yeah, the built-in user model for um, Django. And that includes what you see on the admin portal, those users. So I ran Python manage.py make migrations. So no changes detected. All right. So I forgot to include my RPS API app in the installed apps. Now if I run this, oh snap, foreign key on delete, related name, game, name not defined. Models.cascade. Oh, thank you. Models.cascade. <clears throat> Clear that, run that again. Cool, created it. If I look in my, if I go into Postico, go here, where is it? RPS Lima. Uh, so I created the database. If 
but I didn't actually migrate it. So now I can actually run, now we're back on schedule. <clears throat> it's right here. So now we can actually migrate. So Python manage.py migrate. Cool. Now if I go back to here, which is that Lima, the rock, paper, scissors, Lima, what happened? Oh, I see what happened. <clears throat> Again, I didn't add the database. So I'm gonna get, get rid of that because we're not, I don't wanna use. A SQLite database, I want to use a Postgres database. So if I clear that, migrate that again. <clears throat> now I can actually, hopefully this works now. There we go. We have our game, we have an ID, win status, user throw, computer throw, user ID. Uh, where is it? Rock, paper, scissors. Here's the actual other one that's actually, that I just kind of showed you played it a bunch of times with only, uh, with only one user. <clears throat> All right. So we migrated, we successfully migrated uh, all the built-in migration scripts as well as the rock, paper, scissors app script. Now we can actually create a super user and then run run the server and see what that looks like. So create super user, I'll leave it as blank, tom at email.com, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, so I already know that, I don't care, cool. So clear that, so I created a super user. Now I can run the server. <clears throat> Uh-oh, I already have that port in use. Let's try that again. clear. All right. So now the server is running. Now we can navigate to localhost token auth. So if we go down to the URLs, if we go to localhost token auth, it's going to say obtain, it's going to run this method. So if I go to localhost 8000 slash token auth right here, here is our, uh, this is how we can log in and obtain a, a JWT token, a JavaScript web token, just like we were doing <clears throat> in our news site when we had a user log in and send out a, an ID that was a bunch of alphanumeric characters. That was kind of like the token. Here's how we can do it in uh, Django. All right, so right there. So it says, you should see an HTML form with the username and password field. This is a convenient provided by the, the Django REST framework. Isn't this awesome? Fill in the fields and you should see the J JavaScript web token itself displayed right there on the page. So I'm right here. I'm gonna log in with my super user. One, two, three, post. And here's my token. Now we can store this somewhere. But yeah. All right. Was that? <clears throat> so this takes care of login, but we still need our users to be able to sign up. Fortunately, Django comes with a built-in user model that we can use, which is easy enough. Um, so this is kind of where we actually start going into building an app. We already built this app in this specific tutorial. They called their app core and they added their installed, that installed app core.apps.core config. You don't have to do it this way. This is just another way to do it. Um, we did it just by calling the app like that. <clears throat> so now we need to take a, take a few steps that might seem, uh, I don't even know what that word is at first, but which I promise will make sense by the end. First, we need to create a couple of serializers for our user model. <clears throat> These serializers will be responsible for serializing and unserializing the user model into and out of various formats, primarily JSON in our case. So that's what <clears throat> the serializers do. Uh, go ahead and create a core.serializer. So this is the name of the app 
dot serializers. So I'm in my API or my rock, paper, scissors API app and create some serial dot py. And then literally just kind of copy this whole thing in there. <clears throat> so this is the user serializer, just takes in the username and then we can grab a token. So user serializer with a token. So if there's a user that already exists with a token, we can grab that the token or we can create a token. So we can validate an already existing user that has a token or we can create a new user. <clears throat> breaks it down right here. The serializer with token is for handling signups. All right, keep going down. So now we can actually get to our views and you can pretty much, there are many ways of doing this. There's function-based views, class-based views, or view sets. Since view sets can be confusing if you don't understand what's happening internally, since we don't have enough views here, we're gonna use uh, <clears throat> basic stuff, basic like methods, function-based views, as well as class-based views. So again, we can kind of just copy this into our views right there. I'll let you all read through all this stuff. We see this API decorator for getting a current user. And now in our core URLs, <clears throat> we have to, which is our app URLs, add a URLs.py. We can come into here. Whoop. We're doing this current user. <clears throat> so from the views, we're grabbing the current user and the entire user list class. And we can go to the current user, which grabs that current user or this views user list class. So now we can go into the root directory, which is our rock, paper, scissors with the URLs. We can do instead of core, let's just do like API. And then we wanna reference the rock, paper, scissors API URLs. Or right, let's just call it RPS API. <clears throat> so with that, we're almost good to go. But we still have a problem currently when a user logs in, they receive their token, but none of their user data is uh, populated. So if you come here, it's just the token. It doesn't say anything whether or not a, that user is a attached with that token. So there's no user identification when you're signing in a user. So we're gonna have to define a custom JavaScript web token response. So in our serializer, we're gonna import, where is this from? In our, so we have to actually create a utils file in our app in our RPS app, wait, hold on. Does it say from our RPS app? Or, so within the my site directory, so from the actual project directory, we're gonna create a utils.py file. And we're gonna copy this part. So from cores, but it's not core, it's called RPS API. We're importing the user serializer and we're creating a uh, JavaScript 
essentially a, a response handler to append this user to this request when it comes through. So it's going to look, it's going to have a token as well as a user and we're going to serialize the user. So uh, it can be used from in the front end. So it's literally just adding a new user field with the user serialized data when a token is generated. So in our settings.py file, we need to add this JWS, JWT, uh, where did it go? JavaScript web token, you can put it anywhere right here and just make sure you change this my site to whatever rock, paper, scissors. So that's the name of the project. So the name of the project, it's the path to that utils uh, method. So the rock, paper, scissors, cool. So now when a user logs in, they'll get their user data along with the token. So if I come down over here, I refresh. Uh-oh, what happened? Path, oh, my URLs. Need a comma. Uh oh, what happened? In our views. We're going. Missing the F and from. Thank you. There we go. So if I refresh, see so now I've got my username. <clears throat> So, and that's all you really need to do to set up uh, a username with a token in the back end. Does anybody have any questions about <clears throat> what I did? I literally just kind of followed this entire tutorial right here. And do you want me to go through the React front end just to show you kind of what that looks like to at least logging in a new user? Yay, nay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we have that front, we have the back end kind of done initially. <clears throat> we have that server running. We can keep it running. I can close this out, close that out. Uh, let's see what we can create. So I've got my React front end. I've got my source. Well, uh, let's open up a new. Oh, no. Uh, let's split it. <clears throat> so I've got, I'm at my back end. Now I can see the upper level and go into my RPS front end. LS, <clears throat> and then just uh, NPM start. So I've got my Python, my Django server running on 8,000 and now I've got my React running on 3,000. And I have to connect the two. All right, there's my React. Let's see what it says. Create a user pro profile setup. We kind of already did all this stuff. We follow this tutorial. We're not doing multiplayer. You can, if you want to do that, you can. <clears throat> you just have to think about kind of what that looks like from a user model perspective or just from different models. So uh, you can create the main page should have the following, their username, the number of games they've won. Okay, let's just go through um, logging that user in. Oh, what is all this? Okay, so I'm just gonna close all this stuff. It's all back end. And <clears throat> so let's close this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is let's just say like, all right, 
should call it home page. Let's refresh this. Okay, there's the home page. <clears throat> uh, so in this specific, go to the logo. We need to import, I'm trying to think, what do we need from React Router? So this is where all our routes go in our app.js. So we can import, uh, we have to npm install, npm install uh, React Router DOM. Um, yeah, let's just do that right now. We're not gonna worry about styling at the moment. <coughs> So we're installing React Router DOM, and then up here, we can uh, import, what do we wanna import from React Router? Uh, browser Router, and you can rename that. And then browser route Router route. as Router, and then Route. <clears throat> There's also a thing known as Switch. I, I don't think that's really used anymore, but um, so from, React router DOM. All right. <clears throat> so. Oh, browser router, uh, XGW. Browser. Thank you. So in our home page, we can have our router. And then we have our routes, right? Is that how it goes? Yes. Uh, cool. <clears throat> so here, let's just render, let's go to two uh, login. And we want it to, the component to be some login page, login page, which we haven't created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's go to create a folder called pages. And right in pages, a login page.js, RCS, I create a React uh, functional function component. And I'm going to say a login page. I just want to get this displayed on the screen real quick. Login page. So I need to import the login page, login page from pages slash log page. Uh, let's npm start this again. All right, hopefully it's working. So there's our login page. Why does it go there? So is it exact path? Path instead of two. So there's just the home page. Now I can go to the login page. So there's my login page. <clears throat> now on my login page, I can create a form that grabs some user. So I'll grab a form and I can grab an input. Is it input like, like that? Name, username. Uh, type, is it usually like text? Is that how it goes? So let's, let's just, I just wanna see, all right, there we go. I can say uh, paragraph, whoop. Uh, username. <clears throat> now you, sh you should be using like bootstrap or something like that for all this. Uh, and then, whoop password type password uh, name password <clears throat> so if I look here we have a username and password now I can grab a button say submit and now this form I want to do <clears throat> on click or no on submit equals so we have to create whatever this function is 
And where do we want to store? Do we create this function in the login page or where should we create this function? Over in app.js and pass it through through props. Correct. <clears throat> yeah, let's actually, uh, let's do use state, uh, use effect. Let's see if this works. So in here, we can say const user set user equals use state. It's initially null. Then in app.js, we can const uh, handle login, which is a function that literally just will do some stuff. So probably takes in an event. And this handle login, what, what is this, what is it? What, it, what does it need to do? So I need to take that some user input. Um, so I need to do event prevent default. So it needs to grab this user data. I'm gonna split that screen right here. So we're getting an error because, so handle login, <clears throat> we need to pass this handle login down to the login page. So how do we do that? So there's not an easy way to do it using a route. So we're gonna to have to use a different attribute or, yeah. Uh, the render method? Yep, so we're gonna render, what's well, the render uh, prop? And this render prop takes in, calls function. So we can const render a login page And it returns the login page component. And we have to pass down the handle login, handle login, render login. <coughs> so now in this render, I can recall this render login page. So in here, I can take in some props and let's console log handle props dot handle login. And now I can just call props dot handle login. Now everything should be working. Cool. <clears throat> so, Let's see what this does. Props.handle login. <clears throat> so everything's working. So what I just did was create a login page under pages, import it into my app.js, created a handle login method in my app.js component because I need to keep the user, whether they're logged in or not, at the very top level of my app. So at this, the app.js's user state, and I can pass that state down to parents, my, or my, to children components. And in order to pass this handle login function to the login page, I need to use the render property, which accepts a function render login page and that render login page function literally just returns the login page component with the handle login passed down as a property. So now I'm in my login page, takes in props, I'm console lo logging the props. And when I submit this form, it will ex or invoke this handle login page <clears throat> with hopefully at some point, some of these parameters or so the username and password, which I have yet to actually do yet. So if I open that up, so handle login page, here's that handle login method. <coughs> so what type of button this is? Type, this is a submit button. <coughs> 
So when I, I can do some object destructuring right here, just do handle login. So I can get rid of this part as well as this props. So in here, I need to pass down something to my backend API. So I need to say like let user object. It takes in a username and it's gonna be event.target.username.value, which is coming from, uh, oh, it's coming from right here, this input name, which is username. So event.target username, and so it's the value of that input. I can do the same with the password. Password. <clears throat> so I've got the username object or the user object. Let's just console log that and see if that user object is in fact being passed through to this handle log and submit. So if I go back to my, I can say, you know, TA preet, one, two, three, submit. There's my username and password, which is the same if I go to localhost 8000 slash token, which is the username and password that I'm gonna have to pass into here. So I've got this username or this localhost token, which I'm passing, you know, TA pre 123 to post request. I get this back. So I need to post, I've got that user object. I have to make an API request to that specific URL, this specific token auth URL. So in my sources page or my source directory in my app, I'm gonna create an API. Oh, that's not good. An API directory and inside my API directory, I create a user api.js. And then here is where I'm gonna have a method, create a method that posts to that token auth URL, that user object. So I can make a const login method that takes in a user object. And then I can just return uh, fetch. I can go to that specific URL. It's gonna be a post request. Well, what just happened? Oh. So I can do method, or I can do like just do headers, content, content type, application slash JSON. Uh, do comma method to post. And now I can do the body should be a JSON stringified user object. User object. And I could do dot then uh, let's just return that and see what that looks like. So I've got that. Hopefully it works. Uh, we can test that out in the app.js. <clears throat> so in this handle login, now I actually need to act and invoke that API. So I can say, let, let's make this an async method. Let response equals await. So I need to, this user API, user API dot login and pass in that user object. All right. So now I actually have to import, import user API from 
API slash user API. And it says login is signed to never value. Uh, line 16 response. Uh, there's an S. Thank uh, you. Yeah. And my user API, I'm not exporting it. So I need to export default uh, login. There we go. So now, so my, there we go. I've got that user object. And I'm just going to console log the response. See if we get anything back. So we can look down here in our uh, Django server is running. I can go to my React app, say TA Preet, one, two, three. If I submit it, I should see or something like a response if it makes it through. Cool. So I, I have a response. It's okay. Interesting. If I look down here, I also have a, a post like a post request going through. So now I have this response. Can I do let data equals response dot JSON and console log the data. See what that looks like. So if I refresh T pre one, two, three, submit, I have a pending promise. All right. <clears throat> How do I get rid of that? Uh, adding an await uh, oh, in the thanks. data. Let's try that one more time. TA preet, one, two, three. Cool. So <clears throat> we got a response back with a token and a username. Now we can decide what we want to do with this. We can say like set, uh, set user, and we can apply that entire thing. We can just um, assign it to something. We can, uh, if I go into here and I go into like local storage, uh, I'm just going to clear my local storage initially. If I go local storage, so it's zero. I can, you know, uh, local storage dot set item. I can call it like uh, some token and do data dot token. as well as, you know, set my user to data.user. Now let's just console, I can, uh, let's the console log just the, the user right now. So if I refresh, null, null, the reason why it's, executing it twice is because in my index, it's got this strict mode. If you want to delete that, you can. So it's null, if I ta preet, one, two, three. So there's my user state. Now, if I go to local host or local storage, I've got a token right here, which is my rock, paper, scissors token. Does anybody have any questions of how I did that. So now if I refresh this, my user state is null, but my local storage, I still have that user token. So if I, every time I, I can like in my use effect method or my component did mount method, depending if whether you're using class or functional based components, I can check the local storages token. If it exists, I can make another API request to the user API called maybe uh, if I look at my in the back end here, URLs, the current user. So this current user grabs the current user that's logged in. 
So views, current user. So get, so determine the current user by their token and returns the data. So I can, in theory and in practice, grab this token from local storage or session storage or whatever, make another API request from the front end. So like have like another like uh, const get user, get logged in user and pass in a token and make a post request to instead of auth token, you can go to, where that URLs? No, a API or what is it? RPS underscore API slash current user. So instead of going like here, I can go to uh, RPS underscore API slash current, what does it look like? Uh, current user. And pass in that token in the JSON exactly like this. Oh. I'd watch your address. You have RSP underscore API versus RPS. Yep. <clears throat> so that's how you can get a logged in user if a user's already logged in. Does anybody have any questions? All right. So your in your URLs, uh, you got it actually matching the on the back end side. Uh, the URLs um, is actually matching exactly the uh, views yes okay yep so right here it would be rps api so i'm grabbing a current user oh, where to go so here's the current user api in my app and then in my the and then the other one right here so i go to rps api slash current user runs that current user method in the view grabs a current user and serializes it and responds it back. So with that, does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna stop.